Greetings and welcome back to Kim. I'm Catherine of Sky, and it's been a few days since I recorded this and I have to say I've been feeling much trepidation about getting back because I know that my character is on the edge of death. Um, we shall read this. All that while he felt, though he could not put it into words, that his soul was out of gear with its surroundings, a cogwheel unconnected with any machinery, just like the idle cogwheel of a cheap Biha sugar crusher laid by in a corner. The breezes fanned over him, the parrots shrieked at him, the noises of the populated house behind, squabbles, orders, and reproofs hit on dead ears. Okay, I know that my HP is so incredibly low, it's not even funny, but I have a plan. I think that I would like to look at, there's a very, very handy building menu, and I'm looking for a doctor. Aha, there's one in Delhi, and it's fairly close to where we are. So I'm going to try to go to Delhi before I go to find, um, I believe it's the Queen's somebody, rather, son or somebody? I, I've kind of forgotten, but we will go there first. We'll go to Delhi and get healed up. No, I'm not all right. Uh, let's go to Delhi. Okay, it's only it's gonna cost oh, 14 rupees. Oh no! All right, well, that's okay. We'll try to make some money in Delhi so we can pay for our doctoring care, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, we don't die there. All right. Let's go. We're on the train. Woo! I love the train sounds. Oh, they're so good. Yay! From behind the shaking curtains came one volley of infective. It did not last long, but in kind and quality, in blistering, biting appropriateness, it was beyond anything that even Kim had heard. He could see the carter's bare chest collapse with amazement as the man salaamed reverently to the voice, leaped from the pole, and helped the escort haul their volcano onto the main road. Here the voice told him truthfully what sort of wife he had wedded and what she was doing in his absence. Okay, we are in Delhi! Woo! Here, Generals Nicholson, Nell, and Sir H. Bernard died in 1857 whilst besieging this stronghold, which the rebels, Sepoys, had captured from the Indian government, in which they had found plenty of arms, ammunition, and the place well fortified. It was held by them for a considerable period, during which they set up the King of Delhi as King of Hindustan, massacred the old government pensioners, all the Europeans they could lay their hands on, and after committing most diabolical outrages and plundering the treasury of no less than 700,000 pounds, they were driven out of it by the late General Nicholson, who, after a most resolutely contested siege, entered it on the 21st September 1857. The gallant behavior of the entire British force is beyond human praise. The vicinity of this once bustling city is completely dotted with the most miserable huts and sheds, tenanted by many of its former inhabitants who were, prior to the siege, rich bunyas, affluent and thriving shopkeepers, but who are now squalid, vile, and miserable looking creatures. Bradshaw's Handbook to the Bengal Presidency and Western Provinces of India, 1864. Wow. What an interesting spectacle. They're having a parade. There's an elephant here with some people sitting on top in a little um, constructed thingy. Umbrellas over there on that elephant. Everybody's come, come out to see stuff going on. These must be the European ladies and gentlemen. You can kind of see their dresses and uh, of course the umbrellas shield them from the sun. Nice. Very cool. Oh wow, I didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. Um, where, wait, where, where am I? How do I, where, how did I do that? How did I do that? No, not that. Um, this is dangerous mode. Oh, there's a dangerous guy here. Okay. Okay, let's go to this bed place. <laughs> wow. Let's rest for 12 hours and minus four rupees. Oh God, I only have five left. Maybe they have socialized healthcare here. <laughs> I can only hope. <gasps> oh, the doctor! Aha! Awesome! Okay, so let's talk about Delhi first. Um, maybe we'll get the prices reduced a little bit. 
Do you like Delhi? This is Farooq Chima, Muslim doctor. And he says, Delhi is the greatest city in all the world. They say if you are tired of Delhi, you are... Wait, that's not right. Just don't buy anything. The prices are monstrous. It's a shame because there are more shops here than anywhere and the only gunsmith, unless you fancy a trip to Peshawar or Jaisalmir. Not without supplies. Okay, so let's talk to him again. Please heal me. Doctor, please, I am sick. Can you heal me? You are in a bad way. Come in. The doctor prepared a fizzing tonic, which tasted dreadful, but made Kim feel much better. Oh, yay! I got some more hit points. Boom. Okay, I need some food. So, oh, we have corn. Let's have some of this rice. Just eat that. Combat minus 56. Oh, that must be minus 56 hit points. Okay, so these are like a running total of what we've had had happen. Um, let's go to the doctor again. He cannot... Oh, he can't heal me anymore. Okay. Slight improvement in health. Um, can I see how many... Okay, I have 43 health points. What is this? Price 44, price 140. Oh... Jeez. For 42, I can get healed by the doctor to full health. Oh my god. Wow. Um, <laughs> I need a job or something. I need to figure out... You know what? I could ask the llama. No, I can't. I can't ask him anything. Alas. Alright, let's see who else we can talk to here. There's a, there's a shop here. Aha! Oh, hey! have Hindu outfits. So I know that's one of our quests to get an outfit. Conversations. I'm penniless. This is Sajan Samuel, Hindu tailor. Help me. I've not got two rupees to rub together. Who can I turn to? I'd help you if I could, but you will have to try the pawnbroker like everything else. They'll buy anything. So they will, but where can I find one? There are pawn shops in Delhi, Amritsar, Benares, and Bikaneer. Anything is better than thieving and ending up in prison. I might actually have to resort to thieving, I fear. Aha! Here is the pawnbroker. Wow. They don't pay much for stuff. Let's talk to some people. Can I talk to you? No. Nope. Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, here's our a guard. We don't want to deal with the guard. Here's a table. Muslim letter writer. I don't have enough to buy gossip. What do we got here? Ah, the Hindu chef. Let's beg for the Lama. I am Chela to a great and wise holy man. You may acquire merit by feeding us. We will bless your restaurant. I respect all holy men, but this is a business. Go away. Oh, his opinion went down and we did not get any food. Who are you? Can we talk to you? Oh, gunsmith. How nice. Man, I wish I knew how to get money in this game. Um, okay, so that's the shop with the gunsmith. Let's go across the road and see what's there. Who are you? Oh, you're a policeman! How nice! And you are also a policeman. Oh, there's a guy here. Hello! Aha! British detective! Alright. Strickland. Hello. Yes, do you need something? You look like you know your way around a bazaar. I'm looking for a special gift, a piece of jewelry as a token of my affection. I am no stranger to bazaars myself, although you might not guess it today, but I must play my role a little better, I am told. You don't want to find something yourself? Oh, that I could, my dear boy. To wander incognito through the bazaar is a rare pleasure, but it is not looked upon kindly by the higher-ups, you understand. Incognito? Do you go in disguise? Of course! How else to get the right price, eh? He smiled knowingly. When a man knows who dances the holly hook, and how and when and where he knows something to be proud of, or so a ruddy fellow once told me, anyway, would you be able to help me? If I can find a piece of jewelry, I will bring it to you. Okay, so that quest um, is not there. Here? Okay. So we did this. So finding an outfit, find the River of Arrow. Um, 
Village of the Dead. No. Find a piece of jewelry. So it doesn't give us any idea of where we might find this thing. Ah, but that's okay. Okay, so what do we have here? This looks like a prayer area. Ah, Jama Masjid. Do make an excursion to inspect that rich, chaste, elegant, proportioned, and grand temple. That Juma Masjid, the largest mosque in India. It was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan between 1644 and 1656 at a cost of 1 million rupees. The whole edifice was ornamented at each end with three white marble, black ribbed minareted domes 150 feet high. The summit was ascended by a red stone staircase of 130 steps from whence a most extensive and imposing view of the city, river, ruins, and neighboring country was obtained. Bradshaw's Handbook to the Bombay Presidency and Northwestern Provinces of India, 1864. Wow, that is impressive. What a gorgeous picture. And you can see the market stalls here, trying to sell stuff. Wow, that's so cool. Beautiful. All right. Ah, any Muslim in traditional dress is welcome to come in. I don't think we have any traditional dress. So we'll just have to skip that for now, I'm guessing. Let's walk near. Can we... What is here? Is this a house? No. Can we go that way? No. Okay, what is this building? Hello, pretty building. Ah, yes, it's another prayer building. Hindu temple. Okay, so let's just go away from there. Wow, we have a big problem. We have no money. I wonder if we can, like, go in any of these buildings. Here's a house here. There's nobody at home. Okay, I feel like we're going to the dark side. Let's pick the lock. Can I click this? Come on, pick lock. Do I need... I have a lock pick. Okay, here we can use... How do I use this thing? Can I drag it out? Oh, what's this? Curry! Oh, that looks tasty. Um, how do I use this? could only withstand a rudimentary pick. So maybe it means I have to have a higher level of pick. Maybe. Ish. Maybe these people of Delhi have better, better locks than I would have at home. This is a policeman. I don't want to go anywhere near him. Well, gosh, I'm not quite sure what to do. Um, we could just try making our way back to east of Saranhunpur. Um, maybe that's our best idea. Uh, alternatively, we could go for this river, which might be the River of Arrows, or Arrow River, however he calls it. The um, River of the Arrow. Hmm. Okay, let's just make our way north again. Because I don't know how else to, to get some money here. Travel north with the llama. Okay, we don't have any mo money, so we're going to be taking our health down. Ugh, I hate to do that, but we don't have much choice. Aha, another passage. He did not want to cry, had never felt less like crying in his life, but of a sudden easy, stupid tears trickled down his nose, and with an almost audible click, he felt the wheels of his being lock up anew on the world without. Things that rode meaningless on the eyeball an instant before slid into proper proportion. Roads were meant to be walked upon, houses to be lived in, cattle to be driven, fields to be tilled, and men and women to be talked to. They were all real and true, solidly planted upon the feet, perfectly comprehensible, clay of his clay, neither more nor less. Hey, first month. You've spent a month in Kim's shoes and hopefully learned a little about what he's capable of. Indian life can be hard, but justice is no less swift. If you wish to break the law, you have the means, but do it carefully. Kim's fate is in your hands, but his friends, old and new, may have their part to play. Visit them if you aren't sure how to proceed. 
Well, that sounds like a very good idea, actually. Why are there soldiers? Yeah, are these all guys soldiers? Oh, yep, a private. He would be a soldier. How are you? Aha, let's talk. Tell me, what is the life of a woman of Hind? The proverb says, war is to men and childbirth is to women, but we have wars of our own. I don't doubt it. Indeed. Okay, we got plus 10 merit. This is probably, is that a depot? Yeah. Don't have any money. What's here? Is this food? Chai. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's beg for the llama. My master, a very holy llama, begs chai for his aching bones. Acquire merit by sharing with us. I know better than to cross a priest here. Okay, so we have... Okay, here's Arthur Bennett, Church of England chaplain. Yeah, why are there soldiers? Oh, okay. They do no harm except when they are drunk. They were on the advance party of a regiment on the march, sent out as usual to mark the camp. They bore five-foot sticks with fluttering flags and called to each other, and they spread over the flat earth. Oh, holy one, my horoscope, the red bull on the green field. Look, it is he. He pointed to the flag that was snap snapping in the breeze not ten feet away. It was no more than an ordinary camp marking flag, but the regiment, always, punctili always punctilious in matters of millinery, had charged it with the regimental device, the red bull, which is the crest of the mavericks, the great red bull on a background of Irish green. Certainly it is the bull. Look, yonder comes a priest. It is likely he will understand our talk. We must talk to him of my search. Um, I don't know which one to choose. I want to talk to him right now because I see him. Um, yeah, we'll just choose option two. Never speak to a white man until he is fed. Where was this guy? Okay, can't talk to the llama again. Where is that priest? Is it you? No, that's the woman. This is the private. Is it him? Aha! Church of England chaplain, Arthur Bennett, age 42. Let's talk about the Red Bull. Why, it's a boy. What are you doing? Are you a thief? I do not. I did not steal. I am a disciple to that holy man. Bennett looked at the llama with the triple-ringed uninterest of the creed that lumps nine-tenths of the world under the title of heathen. Why do you speak English? Little boys who steal are beaten. You know that. What's your name? Um, Kim. They call me Kim Rishti K. That is Kim of the Rishti. What is Rishti? I Rishti. That was the regiment, my father's. Irish. Oh, I see. Yes, that was how my father told me. My father, he has lived. Has lived where? Has lived. He is dead in Lahore since city since I was very little. The woman, she kept Kabari shop near where the higher carriages are. Your mother? No, she went out when I was born. Oh, that's your abrupt way of putting it, is it? Kim, eh? Or Kimball? Perhaps. Will you let me go away? He opened the front of Kim's upper garment. You're white, though evidently neglected. I do not think spirits... Wait, not Kimball O'Hara's son? You are not to leave until you speak to Father Victor. Do you understand? No running off. This is very interesting. Between himself and the Roman Catholic chaplain of the Irish contingent lay, as Bennett believed, an unbridgeable gulf. But it was noticeable that whenever the Church of England dealt with a human problem, she was very likely to call in the Church of Rome. Bennett's official abhorrence of the Scarlet Woman and all her ways was only equaled by his private respect for Father Victor. Okay, that is pretty interesting. We need to talk to Father Victor, and we will find him, I think, in the next episode. There's Oh, here's a guy in black robes coming this way. That could be him. In any case, I have run out of time for this episode, so thank you so very much for joining me. I'm Catherine of Skye. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.